and I, I just want to I want to speak this before we. It's going to be out of Matthew eleven twelve. I had a dream probably three or four years ago. I didn't. All I seen was Matthew eleven twelve in the scripture in my dream. I seen this. I didn't know the scripture. I just I just that was the first time I had really it, it absorbed it. it. Was like during a dream, so I, I didn't. It wasn't something I studied a lot or anything. You know, he showed it to me during, so I wrote it down. I went back. And I don't know if it was, uh, he didn't show me. I don't think it was Matthew eleven twelve. 12. I think he just showed me the scripture. The violent take it by force. And I'm going to show you the difference between before Pentecost and after Pentecost. So look at that. Let's, let's do this. I want to share this with you if it's for somebody. Because you've got to understand, this is what deliverance does. We come in forcefully and we remove the devils. You got to get this. We got we got to quit being cowards. If we're going to take a region and we're going to take a territory, we're going to take it by force. That is what deliverance is. It is taken every time we cast a demon out of somebody, he's lost ground. That's why the devil's taking territory in America because we've quit casting him out. Every family, every person we cast demons out of, we gain territory for the glory of God. This is how we were going to win our community is the casting out of demons. Do you feel me this morning? So up to this time, the Bible says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. So we see the kingdom of heaven always suffered violence until Jesus showed up on the scene, got filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to cast out demons, that was the first sign that at the finger of God, he said, if I cast out demons by the finger of God, surely the kingdom of heaven has come upon you. That was the arrival of God's kingdom when Jesus cast out demons. Then he sent his apostles out. He, he, the apostle, what's apostle? It's apostello, sent ones. He sent them out into all these cities. Up to that time, they couldn't cast out demons. They didn't, have, they didn't have, you know, demons were invaded in people's lives. Sickness and disease and all that stuff. So, it had suffered violence from the devil. But when God's people showed up, and they were empowered, Jesus showed up. He gave authority to the disciples. Then He empowered His disciples. Now they begin to go into cities and take it by force. Do you hear me? Do you hear what I'm saying? And it, to take it, by force is to take it violently, to, to come in if you forcefully take it. We forcefully remove demons by the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit. Forceful. So if we're going to win a community, we're going to have to get up out these four walls. I said we're going to have to get up out of these four walls. Praise be unto God that He's provided an outreach trailer and an outreach team for us that we can get into parks and communities and grant. We have to go out, preach the gospel, set the captives free. They, listen, folks, people have been so church hurt and so hurt by fake Christians. I said by fake Christians. They don't have the Spirit of God, but they go to church and they carry a Bible. It's apostasy. God's separating all that garbage. There's a harlot church out there. They call themselves the bride of Christ. Ain't nothing but a harlot. Shocked up with the world. Shocked up with the world. No power. Live like the world. Act like it's the harlot. Don't be deceived in these last days. That's what's happened. They don't want nothing to do with it. They see fake Christians. They don't, people don't want to do it. We got to go to them. But we can't look. And we go, look, what opens up heart? Giving. Give them food, give them clothes, give them all this stuff. That opens up their heart. But we have, the next thing is to open the heart up so they can receive spiritually and, and bring a demonstration of the power. You have nine gifts in operation you can use. The Holy Spirit, He's the gift giver. you got nine gifts available. Those gifts are for you to win the lost. Those are your lures to win the lost. We have to use them. So we want to come with a demonstration not just saying, oh, you know, uh, come follow me in, in Jesus. No, this is the God I serve, and you're getting ready to experience him. You're getting ready to feel the real power of God. What are you battling today? You battle on some addiction? You battle on some oppression? Watch the power of God hit you and it leaves. That's what I'm talking about. Power evangelism. 
power evangelism is missing out there. See, we talk about a Jesus we don't demonstrate. And I'm telling you, any gospel that's preached that doesn't come with a demonstration is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because God always confirms His Word. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's time that we walk in the power and the authority, but I'm telling you, the preaching in America, that it's, you're not going to have it. God ain't going to back up this Kool-Aid this stuff going on. He's not going to back it up. He's not going to back up Kool-Aid Christianity. He backs up the truth when it's spoken. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Power evangelism. This is how we're going to take our communities. This is how we're going to take our cities. We went, when I, when I first became pastor, we went down to some of the worst neighborhoods in this county. Drug ridden, dropped right down the middle of them. Set up, fed them, prayed with them, and had a revival right down there in their area. We go to them. This is how we're going to win our community. We're going to have to get up out the church walls. But you have, while you're here today, you have to be equipped first. And you know the sad thing is, I deal with a lot of people, they've never seen a demonstration of the power of God. It's some foreign thing. Even the pastors freak out and they come against you. Well, I, I believe in deliverance. Are you doing it? Well, no. Then you don't believe it. Whatever you believe, you're going to be doing. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to go out and spread the gospel. Did you hear what I said? You're going to do what you believe. <clears throat> Amen. So we're going to have to... They violently kick demons out of people. That's what wins the homes back. So deliverance, that's why the devil... Why does he fight deliverance? Why do pastors fight deliverance? Why do Christians fight deliverance? This is why. Because you, he loses territory. And we get that cowardly spirit. Well, I don't want to say this. And I don't want to say... Listen, it's got to be spoken. It's got to be preached. But trying to please them and please him. That's why we've lost territory. We've allowed the demons to come in our church and divide it. So you cast one out to half the church leaves. Why? Because they all got full of demons. One's following the other's whole group. Cast them gossiping demons out. Quit dealing with it. I don't care how much money they go. Guess, and what, guess what? God has sent you more. What you don't understand, that's what he does. Every six months, he does a cutting away here. Why? Because we go to another level. And we go to another level. And we go to another level. And he keeps cutting, and he keeps cutting, and he keeps cutting, and he keeps sending more, and he keeps sending more, and he keeps sending more, and he keeps cutting, and he keeps cutting, and, cut, and he keeps providing. See, we're not, you, you, we, we've, we, we rely too much on people. That's why I don't get in the tithe books. I don't care. Unless it comes through an email, I don't see nothing. I can care less. And I know we've had some, we've had some great tithers leave. We're going to have some more leave. And that's okay. I'm okay. I, they're not my source. Go hang, out with, go hang out with the hater club. I don't care. All the rest of them. It don't matter. This will, I mean, I'm, tell, I'm trying to impart something to you. This is the attitude you need. Because some, God's going to call some of y'all into ministry. And you're going to say, you know what? I'm not compromised. If it's in here, we don't compromise. We don't compromise. That's how it has to be. And we need to quit compromising in our homes and our families too. It all starts in the revival starts in the house. Revival starts in the home. Amen. And like I said, if you're here today, this is this is an equipping mandate for you. You're, you're here for a reason. Not by accident, not because somebody told you God's called you here. And he can take everybody that's in here, the ones that come, he can take this many, and we can win this whole region. He took 12 and won the whole, look, we've got probably 40. You don't think he can't? Absolutely. Because there's some other ones, that ain't, we've probably got a couple hundred on the, same, on the same board, on the same boat, on the same train, that we can win this city. All we've got to do is get them empowered. All we've got to do is stir them up and get them encouraged. We can win this city. The last boot camp, I was already getting messages. People were already out doing it. Never, never cast demons out before. They grabbed a hold of it. They were stirred up, and they started doing it, and saw it, and it worked. And I said, look, it ain't, look. It's the same Holy Spirit that rose Christ from the dead lives on the inside of you. We're just flesh bodies. We're just flesh bodies. There's no, there's no difference between me and you. I know God calls people for different things, but it's the same Holy Spirit. And we're fit together in a body, and we've got to start coming together as a body. Amen. So the first thing I want to get into, and we'll, we'll take a quick break here in just a minute, uh, is the soul ties was the big thing that was all me because that was something I'm, I'm learning about and I think people need to know about because their soul ties, it keeps people in bondage. They don't even realize it. And I want, I want to show that today. So uh, what I want to do is the seven steps to deliverance are some things I just have to, I have to preach here. Uh, number one, you've got to be 
you got to be honest with himself. It should be in there. It should be your first page there. Uh, one must be honest with himself and with God. He, he, with, with himself and God, he expects to receive God's blessing of deliverance. So you've got to come here expecting. You've got you to know, this is the thing, if you're going to do deliverance ministry, you have to know that this is a ministry of Jesus Christ. You have to know that. You have to get that in your heart. If you're going to do deliverance, you've got to know this is a real ministry. That's what Jesus did most of the time was cast out demons. They were screaming. They were doing all this stuff. So this is a real ministry. You got to understand that. So here's the thing. You must be honest with yourself. And Vicky, come right up here and spoke it. You got to be honest with yourself. Saying, you know what? I want to be free. Some people don't. I've got, I've got people. In, I don't push deliverance on anybody in our church. We do mass deliverance. When we do mass deliverance, if you cooperate, you'll get free. If you don't, you keep your mouth shut, you don't get free. And what happened? We went to this new level and there's some demons being stirred up because they won't release them. Because the fire has gotten hotter. You keep the fire cranked up, you're going to keep the demons out. They ain't going, people ain't going to stand it. Listen, we want revival fire up there. We want people to walk in that door and pull up in the parking lot. Look, the power of God hit them. Out. Done. Delivered right in the parking lot. We got to lay hands on that's, that's what we're looking for. Where God's glory is just right over, bam, poured out. We can be equipping and, and send people out and take that fire wherever we go. Take it to your church. Um, ask God to help you see yourself as He sees you. And to bring the light to anything that's not of Him. That's the first thing I do when I'm praying. I say, look, Lord, if there's anything there, please show it to me. I, I want it out. Use me as an example. If you've got to throw me, I'm, I don't care. You can embarrass me, make a I don't care. I want it out. That's how, that's how we got to be. That's how we're going to be. Because if you're in bondage, here's, here's why we can't set captives free and we have powerless preaching because we have no power because we're in bondage ourselves. If you're bound up, you ain't going to set nobody free. Listen, the devil can't cast out a devil. That's why he's holding you back from doing it. That's that spirit holding you back from doing deliverance. <laughs> you got you to be free, right? Number two, humility. And we saw that demonstration of humility today. We saw Miss Vicky come up here and just pour her heart out and say things that a lot of people won't say. It's amazing. That, and that's going to bring so much deliverance to so many people. But she, listen, she loves you here enough that she wants to share her testimony. That way you can be free. You ain't got to say that. Look, we, we do a lot of individual deliverances, and I, I want to be that. My, what, I'm, what God's showing me is I'm freeing myself up, and I know He's going to take care of me, where I can be more available to people. Where I can be here two or three days a week. If I got to work a few days, that's fine, but if I can be here at least a couple, because right now I'm, I'm, I'm taking Fridays off and I'm still busy. It ain't enough time. So I want to be where I can at least have two or three days here to spend with people, and I'll spend all day, daylight like the dark, and I'm at midnight. We'll, we'll get done, we'll get done. But at least I'll have more time for people. Because the need is there. Until we get people raised up. We get people raised up, then, then I can just go out and help equip churches. You know? so, but right now, I want to make sure people get free because this is what's going to bring revival. Do you hear me? Deliverance is what's going to bring revival. I'm telling you. I've seen it. This is what's going to happen. And we need it in our area. And a lot of people, they're like, man, I'm glad. We ain't got to go down to Pastor Greg Lock. Come here. We'll take care of you. Everybody, we, everybody comes, they get free. Sometimes we gotta, there'll be some things surface afterwards. We've got to take them through it again, but... They get free. You know, we, we get down to it, and God, it's, it's by the power of God, He does it. But humility involves a recognition that one's independent upon God and His provisions uh, for, for deliverance. It also involves a complete openness with God's servants ministering in the deliverance. So if you're doing deliverance, they need to be open. If, if people's not open and honest, then they're not going to receive that deliverance. You know, a lot of times, so here, here's one thing I want to share with you today. If you're praying with somebody, and they're, you feel like they're manifesting, but it ain't coming out, there's a gatekeeper there. This is what I'm, just, I'm sharing with y'all what I experienced. There's something there. And most of the time, it's unforgiveness. Mo, I'm telling you, this, I'm, I want you to write this down. Uh, no, no, number one gatekeeper in our area, what I deal with, is unforgiveness. If the demons, look, if you're praying for four or five minutes and they're not coming out, then you need to say, hey, look at me. Do you got somebody you need to unforgive, forgive? Or do you, and sometimes now I'm getting to the point God's revealing it to me. I just say, hey, you, need, you got somebody you need to forgive. Or you need to forgive yourself. Because we're doing it more. The more you do it, the more you see it. So you'll understand. So that's what we need to do. You say, hey, is there unforgiving somebody? And God will reveal it if there is. If they don't want to forgive that person, you shut the deliverance down and you go home. It stops. But the moment they forgive from their heart with their mouth, bam, it breaks it. And so unforgiveness toward others and unforgiveness for itself is a two major things. So if you're not getting anywhere and things aren't manifesting, find out those two things. 
And if, here's another thing what I've seen. If they've been involved in witchcraft, you better have a few people with you. If they've been involved in witchcraft, you better have a few people with you. Because there's going to be some manifest, probably anger and all kinds of crazy stuff's going to happen. Ever, anybody I've ever dealt with it? Either they've, their family's been in witchcraft or they've been in witchcraft, there's something there. Get ready. Get ready. So I just I, things I want to share with you that the Lord has brought to me. Um, always the unforgiveness, that is a gatekeeper and it's one of the biggest ones. So like I said, if, so don't pray for 30 minutes and nothing coming out. You're wasting your time. If you're praying a while, this while if praying a while, stop. What's going on? And use this to be revealed. If not, you'll pray 30, 45 minutes if, and if they don't want to forgive. So here's, this, this is one we had with uh, Brother Stan recently over at, at the Glory and Fire on a men's thing. So the, the man, we kind of already went through the unforgiveness stuff. Well, apparently it wasn't from the heart. And he, had, and he had forgiven his mom. But it apparently wasn't from the heart. We got, that was the gate. We got everything else out, but there was one thing holding. And I said, okay, it's your mother. You want to forgive her? And he just sit there. I just sit there. You want to forgive her? And I just, he just sit there. I said, well, man, this is where it stops. So he hadn't. He, he spoke it with his mouth, but it wasn't from the heart. Do you see what I'm saying? It's got to be from here. That was the difference. That, it's got to be from the heart. When he spoke it from the heart, we commanded it out, and the man hit the floor and broke a bucket. Amen. And he, after that, he got completely free, and the power of God hit him right there. That's what it was. Why? Because I, I, you start understanding that if it ain't coming out, there's something holding it. Because when you have the authority and you know you have the authority and you're exercising it, it comes out. It don't take long. Within a few minutes, they'll, come, they'll try to hide. And they'll, what they do is the demons try to hide and they try to hide as long as they can. But see, the more Holy Ghost power you got, the less they can hide. They can't stand the fire of God. And the more fire you carry on you, the quicker him joker's going to come out. Do you hear what I'm saying? They can't stand it. And you keep putting the heat on them. Keep pleading the blood over them. They hate the blood. They, and you keep pleading that. And they'll eventually, they, they can't handle it. They can't speak the word. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. You know, just, just start speaking scripture. Start speaking scripture. And that thing, I'm telling you, it eventually come out. But they want to hide as long as they can handle it. But man, when that heat hits them, it's gone. And you're going to have to try different techniques. Because sometimes I'll do a count. I count a lot. I say, look, devil, on the count of three, all of you out. They'll come out. Or I said, devil, on the count of three, I'm going to touch the top of their head, and they'll come out. So, and what it is, it's, you can, listen, when you're, when you're passing out demons, you can lay hands on them. That's a transfer of power when you do that. You'll watch, you'll see a difference when you do. You hit, you'll put their head on them, and bam, it goes through them, they'll come out. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to show you little nuggets today. Do not be afraid to lay hands on people. If somebody tells you they got anger and rage, back up off of them. Tell them to back up a little bit. And I know Vicky don't mind me sharing. She could, I was praying. We just commanded us up. Man, she jumped up. Get away from me. I'm like, well, you come up here to me. You get away from me, you know. But it was that, it manifests. You got to have that room. I mean, it was like that, you know. It was quick. Almost unexpected. I didn't expect it. It jumped up. So you got to be ready. You got to be alert. You got to be watching. You'll see when they start coming out, they'll start doing different things, their bodies and stuff, and might get ready to manifest. But if they, if they mention anger or rage or if they've been in witchcraft, be, beware because it can manifest on you. And you so... And you don't want people to get hurt, so you need to have people to kind of restrain them. And a lot of times when, when things manifest, they don't even realize. They don't even realize. Do you have a, you have something to say? Yeah. Yeah, as we were praying, it was revealed to her, and that's when it, yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, see what she's saying? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm forgetting. She's told you. I'm going to tell you. She's a demon slayer. She'll, she'll sit back and she'll kind of be humble and won't say nothing. But listen, she, know, she knows what she's talking about. She's helped me a lot with deliverance and understanding some of it. And I'm telling you, God, God's brought her some. I thank God for her. But um, yeah, that's she's saying. So when we're working together, when you're working with somebody, the Holy Spirit is dealing with them. And what he's doing, he's bringing things to their subconscious. What's what happened with her? It came up and she's like, I thought I forgave him of that. So when something comes to your, you, and you minister that to the person, if you're ministering to somebody, say, look, if anything's coming to you, let me know, because the Holy Spirit is bringing that so you can get that out, right? That's what, that's what it does. So you're working with the Holy Spirit. That's why we can't, we can't cast out demons in the flesh. You might start out that way. When I first really started getting into it, I kind of used a book and a manual a lot because it was, it was how I was learning. I was growing and it worked. But eventually, as we, as we do it more, we're getting more and just, you know, it's going quicker. We're picking right up. See, you, it's a growing thing. It's a growing thing. So the power and the authority was there. It's just learning to operate, and it's operating more in the gifting than in the natural and, and just trying to work through a book. But I know it's a, it's a good place to start. So the, look, uh, Pastor Greg Locke's got a wonderful manual. It is a great place to start. It's very basic, very simple, good renunciations. If you're going to do deliverance and you're, and you're new at it, use that book. Download it and just use it. But as you go, you'll learn you ain't going to need a lot of it to just get stored in you because you say it so much, you'll know right what to call out. You know what I'm saying? So uh, then you'll start. And you got to understand about demons. They are persons without bodies. That means they are a personality. So a lot of times when, you're, when people's talking to you, listen. You listen and listen to the spirit that's speaking out of them. If it's hurt, if it's anger, if it's reject, you'll hear the spirit out of what they're saying. So you got to be, you got to really pay attention and you can also, with people's actions, you'll start noticing that different spirits, look, they're a spirit and they're a personality. So anger has a personality. Rage has, you know, they have personalities. They're persons with personalities. So you'll start seeing that in people. You're like, oh, they got spirit of anger. They got, you know, spirit of rage. And you say, how do you know if I need deliverance? If you've got something in your life you can't control. If you can't control your anger or you can't, or anger's overtaking you, or if you've got some type of, if you've got an addiction, it's something that you can't break on you. Or you're trying to break it, and you're trying to break it, and you just can't break it. There's probably a spirit behind it, especially if it goes a, a, a deep root, maybe something you've been into a long. Listen, you can come down and get saved and still be, need deliverance. This is where we've missed it in a church. So now we get people saved, we go ahead and get them delivered right there in the front. What, we, we battle, we get, and bam, God hits them, feel, he, he heals them, and fills them, and look, it's all done. Instead of just come down and say a little, now I lay me sleep prayer. We, we, we pray with them, get it received, confess with the mouth, right? We do that, and then we get them free. So this works hand in hand. Because look, just because they get saved don't mean demons are going to come out. You've got to call them things out. You've got to call them out. Amen? So, um, repentance is, a deter- is determined turning away from sin and Satan. So look, if, people, if somebody, <laughs> you get delivered and you go back to what you were doing, you're going to get that demon back. Bottom line. So whatever got it, whatever, however you received it, it's how it's going to come back. So that's why we got to repent and turn away from sin. We turn away from it. Number four, renunciation is the forsaking of evil. They renounce. You forsake that evil. You, you forsake that witchcraft, that pornography, the adultery, the foreign. You, you forsake that. You renounce it. Lord, forgive me. The Freemasonry or whatever that, whatever, whatever it may be, that's renouncing. It's forsaking it. It's turning away. It's turning away. It, it, renunciation is an action resulting from repentance. If one, if one has repented of religious error, he may need to completely renounce it by destroying all literature and items associated with error. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of demonic doctrines out there. And there's a lot of, like I said, people don't understand. They think everybody with, with, everybody with a Bible and all this stuff at the, and in a pulpit is a preacher. They're not. The Bible, the Bible says uh, Satan has a mess, they're angel messengers of light. Angels, uh, angels of light, I believe it calls them. So they come in the pulpits. They don't have the, the power of God. They have the Bible. And, they, have, and they're, they, they twist the doctrine to deceive you. And so look, here, here, let's look at it like this. If you had, if you had food, a, a big bowl of, big old plate of spaghetti, say just a little bit of, a little, just a little bit of feces was in it. Just a little, little bit, like a, a pepper. Are you going to eat that? 
If there was just a little bit of, just a little bit, it touched it and was in it. Are you going to eat that? That's what we do in Christianity. A little bit of feces, it gets in it, and it ruins the whole thing. Why are, why are we taking in doctrine that's not of God? Why are we absorbing this stuff? You're not going to eat, you wouldn't eat something that had feces in it. Why are we absorbing this doctrine? Do you understand what I'm saying? One little bit, one little twist, done. Because if they're trying to twist it, it's for deception. It's not, okay, so it's, it's one thing if, if I preach something wrong because I don't, I, my intention is not to deceive you. Do you understand? My heart is not to deceive you. I may teach something wrong or interpret it wrong, but it's not, it's not to deceive you or run you. Some people do this to deceive you and run you in a rail. They take the blood out. They take repentance out. Do you see what I'm saying? It's one thing, you know, because I don't, I, I tell everybody, I don't know everything about the Bible. I don't understand everything about the Bible. So I have, you know, they'll come to us. Look, if I, if I misinterpret something, please come to me. And I want to correct it and make it right. That's because my heart's right. But see, if I'm trying to twist it and pull things, it's to deceive you. That's where it gets off. And that's where the little bit of feces gets in it. Do you see what I'm saying? Why are we absorbing this garbage? You wouldn't eat something with a little drop of something in it. Why are we taking a gospel? Now, just a little bit. And you see it, all, the, and, and, you know, all these people, these, these popular preachers on, on YouTube, they're absorbing this. It's garbage. It's garbage. It's garbage. And I'm not going to call them out because I haven't emailed them yet. But some of y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm, look, I, I go to people self. And if they don't want to talk to me and talk about it, then I'll call them out. And they're deceiving people. And they're leading people astray. There's no repentance. It's, 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 a, gar, it's a watered down gospel. No change. So, there is another gospel being preached. This is what's happening. And people are flocking to it. God's people... The, the born-again people even flock into it. They fell into this deception. They fell in this deception. He said, many will depart from the faith. He's talking about the true faith. He's talking about the, the true blood-bought repentance preaching. He said, they're going to fall away from it. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to open your eyes up this morning. Why? Because we've compromised. We've turned it about self, self-worship, self-everything, fill my pockets, big house. We've turned it to self. That's what's happened. And God's people has been led astray. And I ain't playing. I, look, I don't have, I'm going to tell you, I don't have a lot of preacher friends. Because I call them straight smack out. They don't, and look, they don't like when I show up somewhere too sometimes. Because we're going to clean house. We go, I said we're going to clean house. Holy Ghost going to have his way. And if they got demons in them, they're going to get stirred up. That's why I told Vicky. I said, you sure you may come to Harvest? I love, I love people, but I, I have... I have a few, you know, we have like-minded people and God's connected more. But listen, I'm, I'll, I'll stir some pastors up. Because I call out their, their nonsense. I call out their garbage. I call out their witchcraft. We have to, folks. Somebody's got to stand up and speak something. And my thing is to impart boldness in you. Like Barry prophesied, he said, buddy, you got, you got the Jehu spirit. He said, but you're going to impart that to people. Just, just wild men that are just going to get up and preach and say what needs to be said. I praise God. I've watched, look, I've watched Barry, man. He, look, he, I mean, he'll get up there, he'll get up there and rip too. But we, we encourage one another, we impart to one another. He sees, he sees the change. He sees the, hey, you know, we, we need to get up and speak boldly. And I, I heard him, he prayed the, the prayer out of the park. I thought, good Lord, man, God, Holy Ghost got a hold of him. He was just calling out, calling people out, repentance, calling, the, calling everybody to repentance of their witchcraft and all the nonsense. Said, That's what we need. You know, people don't like that. You're not going to make a lot of pastor friends, but who cares? I'm not a green room elbow bumper. I, I, he can have all that. I'm, I want to be out with the sheep. I want to smell like the sheep. We ain't bumping elbows. You come on, I come to your church and preach, we ain't bumping elbows. I got, we got business to take care of. We got people that need to be free. We'll go eat lunch some other time. But we got too much of that. Too much of that prestige and all that garbage. It's all garbage. Fake humility. Fake trying to be somebody. Titles and names and tags. Want to be somebody. It's garbage. I understand we have to, we got titles, and God graces you for a position in the fivefold ministry. You have a title, I understand it. He's got grace for that, and, and, and people should respect that, but not to be lifted up. And, you know, you got some people, well, I'm apostle so and so, and you got five people in your church and their family members, and that's all you got. How many churches are you over? But we won't be called apostle. Where's the power? Where's the signs? Where's the miracles? Where's the wonder? Oh, but I'm apostle so and so. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's what we get, because we want to be lifted up. The flesh loves to be lifted up. I don't even know where I'm at now. Y'all don't get me off board. 
God freely forgives all who confess their sins and ask for forgiveness through His Son. John, uh, 1 John 1, 9. He expects us to forgive all others who have ever wronged us in any way. Unforget, we just talked about that. Willingness to forgive is absolutely essential in deliverance. If they don't want to do it, shut it down, tell them to go home. Come back when they're ready for deliverance. In prayer, ask God to deliver you and set you free in the name of Jesus. You ask God. Prayer and warfare are two separate, distinct activities. Our warfare against demons, powers, is, is not fleshly, but spiritual. Use the weapons of, of submission to God, the blood of Jesus, the word of God, and your testimony as a believer. So warfare and casting out demons. So there, here's the thing with deliverance ministry. A lot of pastors are scared of it because it cleans the church out. Who cares? But you are in the face of the devil. You, listen, you are the front lines. You are the front lines of humanity being set free from demons. Do you understand that? You are the front. It takes boldness. It take, I mean, you got to look at, I mean, it takes bold, it takes, you know, to not care about what, you got to die, if you're going to do deliverance, you better die to the flesh. But you are the front lines. You are the ones that's going to be able to set the captives free and clear the ground. Amen. Take territory. Get families restored. Get them, get them put back. That's going to be you. That's going to be you. And you got you got to jump in. You got to go after it in Jesus' name. And that's where we're at. And some people, and, there, and so, some people's like, even on the evangelistic outreaches, everybody's got different look. If, if under the sound of my voice, if there's any demons there and I'm doing evangelistic outreach, they're coming out. Because here's the thing. Some people say, well, don't, don't cast demons out of an unbeliever. That person might not want to get saved because he's got a demon. You want to get saved? No, I don't want to. Well, he's got a demon in him. So sometimes you've got to get them delivered so they can hear the Word of God. And look, if they want it back and they want their demon, guess what? He'll come back. And if they love him so much, he'll have seven more buddies with him. That's not my problem. That's theirs. They get an opportunity to get saved. They're turning from God. Some people may not have that same view, and that's okay. But Jesus didn't tell me to pick and choose. Now, when somebody comes to me for deliverance, I don't. If I got people come to me. Well, my, my son needs to be delivered, and I said, "Does he want deliverance?" Well, you know, you're wasting the mind of your time. You might want him delivered, but if he don't want to be delivered, it ain't. Now, if he's at an evangelistic outreach, we can preach and we can go through it. If he wants to receive it, he can. Oh, my husband needs deliverance, or my wife needs deliverance. You know, they have to want it. I go to them, and I, I, I go and I meet with people, and they're like, I don't want nothing to do with it. I've had three other ministers. One, one guy, you know, he's had three, four other ministers. And they did all kinds of crazy stuff. And I'm, I'm just trying to build a relationship with him so I can at least help him a little bit. And he's went to some of the ministers, that come to, and they, they, they have ruined him. Jumped on him, started screaming at him, and, and it, there was no compassion in it. So I've had to come in. I said, look, I, I can get to him. I love people. I'm, I'm relatable with people. I can get along with anybody. I can get along with a tree. I can get along with pit bull. As long as it don't bite me. I get along. I was always like that in school. I've always loved people, and I've always gotten along with people. So I, said, I, I said, I can't just go over there and start. I said, I'm going to be led by the Spirit. If the Spirit says, no, he ain't, I'm not doing it. But I'll go talk to him, and I'll go love on him, and I'll let him know that, that I'm here for him. And I'm not here because his mama told me to come here. I'm here because I love him. This is the, this the one. I'm going out for the one leaving the 99. And I let him know that. And I didn't do deliverance on him. He's like, well, it didn't work all the other. It worked for a little while. And I said, well, it'll work. But see, if they don't want it, so it, it's a cycle. It'll work for a minute, but he's not wanting to confirm with it and carry it out. So they've got to be ready to carry it on out. Evangelic, evangelistic outreach, a lot of times people, they, they feel and experience the power, you can get them saved. So the devil likes to use that to keep ministers from displaying power so it, so it don't destroy his kingdom out wherever you're at. I would just go in and go do it, and we let the chips fall where they may. We got teams there to minister to them, to get them saved, and get them into church. If they don't, that's on them. Our job is done. Go set the captives free. You might have a different view on that. That's okay. I'm not here to. That's a secondary issue. You can do it however you want. That's how I do it. Everybody does it different. Do we understand? I just want you to have my take. You can do it however you want to do. It. I'm not here to influence people on how to do things. You got you 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 get filled with the Holy Spirit and have Him lead you. Amen. But I don't pick and choose who gets healed. If, somebody, if I see somebody needs healing, I'm going to lay hands on them. He said, freely you've given, freely you've received, freely give, Matthew 10, 8. And we're going to freely give it away. Amen? Um, if you see somebody bound, if you see somebody sick, you've got Jesus on the inside of you. you. You don't have to have a pastor to tell you to go do it. You can do that. You have the authority to do it by Jesus, not them. I don't need a certificate to preach the gospel. Man don't ordain me, God does. 
Do we get in this? You don't have to have a certificate to baptize people. That's all man-made doctrines. Do you hear what I'm saying? He, he told you to, that Jesus gives certificates to his disciples. They are going out. No, there was a confirmation of a demonstration of the power. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is man-made stuff. And that's okay if they operate like that. I think, I think, I think you know, man, men need to confirm you, that God, godly men should confirm you. I, I believe that. But I, my certificate don't come from them. them de- Look, you got people that's got all kinds of certificates, stacks of them. Tell them to go take them to the devil, see if he's going to come out. He don't care about you. There's many people with certificates that don't have any power. They've never seen the sick healed. They've never seen demons come out of people. But they got all this knowledge, all this head, and all, all these certificates. The devil does not care how many degrees you got and how many certificates you got. Ne- yeah, 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 yeah. Ta- yeah. Next time you go, take your little certificate. When you go to cast out demons, show it to him. So you got to come out. Do you hear what I'm saying? He doesn't care about all that. Go into the world. If you find them, you free them, you save them, and you baptize them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Man, I'm going to try not to get fired up. Hallelujah. That's the seven steps to deliverance. You, you got, and I, want, and I, I tried to give you all this stuff. I know we're not going to go through it, but go through this stuff. I'm going to eventually try to get this put into a manual and get it printed off and all that stuff, but I'm still doing some revisions on it. And I've just pulled it out of different books, different teachings, different things. I'll have all that on there. Um, Lester Summerall is, is the, a lot of the outlines from him. I've added stuff. I've removed stuff. You know, I've kind of made it my own. Um, Derek Prince is a great one. I've got a lot of information from him. There's really not anybody teaching deliverance anymore. I don't know any deliverance teachers. God is great. Glory to him. He's helped me learn this stuff to help you all. So I've kind of put these manuals together. They're all free. Take home with you. And you take this and you write notes and use that. You go teach somebody about deliverance. You go do a deliverance teaching. Get a group of eight or ten. This is for you. I don't care. Use it. Share it. Copy it. I can care less. Get the information out. Get some people that need deliverance and teach them when you, when you get to learn it. Right? That's, that's how the gospel spreads. See, too many years has been about the preacher. Well, he wants to keep everything for himself. He don't want the people to have power. Why? Because he wants them to keep coming back. Listen, when you come back, I want you to bring people with you. Look who we got free. Look who we got saved. Look who we got baptized in Jesus. You see what I'm saying? That's how it spreads. But it became about us. What I do, you can do. Do you understand that? And what's that do? It keeps it an even playing field on the, on, the, on, the, on the cross. It keeps everybody even. There's no big eyes, no little use. We're all even at the cross. There is positions. God has grace and anointing for positions. I understand that. But as far as apostolic power, that's for you. That's for you. Don't let any devil, don't let any devil or preacher or anybody else tell you that is for you. You've got to decide if you want to operate in it. And when you step out in it, you'll see it operate. Our people, no, look, they got the, I mean, he ain't been saved that long. He's, he's already casting demons out. I mean, he knows it. Why? Because he didn't get caught up in all the religious stuff. Brother Jesse. And he don't mind me, oh, he'd come in here uh, since he was 14 year, years old, addicted to meth and heroin, all these drugs. 37 years old, back in October, walked in here, come down and got saved. And he's like, look, man, something's still in me, and he's come out. Let's go in the office. Everybody was already kind of left, so just hang on a minute, let me greet everybody out. Took him in there, about 15 minutes, that demon came out. Took the desire out, he's done. And he got on, listen, got on fire for God. He's getting his life straightened out. He's getting things straightened out with the law. He's, he's working on getting a job. That's only since October. And listen, he comes down there and casts demons out of people. He don't know everything about the Bible, but he watches. He watches his pastors. He watches a minister, and we pour into him. Why? Because I'm raising up another demon slayer, and another one here, and Monty, same way. I mean, just, it goes on and on. He's raising up a bunch of nobody. He don't need big names. These are pot, look, he could have... He called the Pharisees and all that stuff, but they were so full of religion and head knowledge, he didn't need them. He wanted somebody teachable. Say, so, you know what? Humble yourself for God. He'll teach you and show you and send you out. He don't need all that stuff. You don't have to have 57 degrees. That's what, he's, it's, 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 the, it's those things that confounds the wise. It's a foolish thing. That, it's the, fool, the, the foolish things that confound the wise. It was a foolish thing seven years ago for him to take this alcoholic, set him free, and use him to go out and do what we're doing, help equip. It was, that was a foolish thing to the world. Why are you going to use him? He ain't got no degrees. He can't even always speak. He don't even like standing in front and talking in front of people. He messes up all the time when he's speaking. Fumbles and y'all hear me all the time. I mess up all the time. I don't care. I just keep on going. It don't matter. It doesn't matter. Moses said, look, Lord, you can't use me. I'm slow of tongue. Slow of speech. Good. 
If you've got a problem like that, praise the Lord, because God's going to use you. Amen? Yeah. He doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. Amen? He wants to qualify you this morning. Amen? Glory to God. Take a little break, and we'll come back, and uh, then we'll do some lunch. Hallelujah.